people and welcome to this session in which we will discuss few disallowed deductions. Now deduction and taxes are good. Why? Because deductions, they reduce your taxable income. And as they reduce your taxable income, they reduce your tax bill. So businesses, they would like to get as many deductions as possible because they would reduce their tax bill. That's the idea behind it. But there are certain deductions that are considered against public policy. And let's take a look at those deductions. First, illegal payments. Two, legal fees. Three, illegal business. Four, drug dealing business. Five, political contribution and lobbying expenditure. Now, bear in mind, each one of them will need to discuss separately just to explain why and under what circumstances that deduction is allowed. But generally speaking, those are disallowed deductions unless there is a specific exception. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, ForhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Starting with illegal payments. Remember, when we are discussing business deductions, what are the overriding aspect of it? Well, it has to be ordinary and necessary and reasonable in compensation. Let's talk about illegal payments. What are illegal payments? Illegal payments is when you bribe someone, when you have kickbacks. Are these ordinary? Do all businesses do that? Do that? And the answer is no. At least in the U.S., we don't do that. Is it necessary to make illegal payments? No, it should not be necessary. It should not be ordinary and let alone reasonable. So illegal payment are not necessary payment, are not ordinary. Therefore, any illegal payments, for example, if you pay to bribe a cop, a judge, if you try to bribe another business owner, any type of a bribery is illegal. You cannot deduct it. Illegal payments are not deductible. How about legal fees? If you incur legal fees, are legal fees deductible? Simply put, if you are defending yourself. Well, the legal fees must be related to business slash trade activity or income producing activity. So if you are incurring legal fees for your business, for your income producing, let's assume you have a rental property and you have to evict a client. Well, that's legal fees. How about you had a criminal case against you for some reason or another because you committed fraud, you are accused of fraud as part of your business or trade. Well, criminal cases related or associated to business activities, when you pay the fees, those are deductible as long as they are related to business activities. In other words, it's part of your business. If you're an employee, it's a different story. But if you are a business owner and the case is about your business, how about illegal businesses? What are some examples of illegal businesses? You could be running a gambling operation. You could be a bookie. You could have poker, illegal poker machine, etc. So those are illegal businesses. For illegal businesses, you have to understand it's a still a business. It's illegal, but it's still a business. So you can deduct operating expenses. So when you run your business, you might have to pay for supplies. You might have to pay for employees. You might have to pay for contractors. You might have to pay for utilities. Operating your illegal business is business deductible. Be why? Because your business income is also includable. However, illegal payments, bribing cops, kickbacks, bribing judges, trying to pay someone to influence their decision, which is a form of bribing, those are not deductible. So illegal business itself, the operating expenses, and of course the operating income is taxable. I don't have to tell you the operating income is taxable. It is taxable, but the operating expenses is deductible unless it's illegal payments. That's illegal business. What about drug dealers? If you are a drug dealer, what would happen? Well, if you are a drug dealer, operating expenses are not deductible. So if you're a drug dealer and you're paying dealers, you're paying for a transportation expense, 
you're paying for cell phone, you're paying for whatever reason to operate your business. Drug dealers cannot deduct their operating expenses. They cannot deduct their operating expenses. However, listen to this one. They can deduct cost of goods sold. So cost of goods sold is deductible for drug dealing. Remember, your income is always taxable. So you're going to take your income minus cost of goods sold, the cost of the drug itself. But to run the business on a day-to-day -day operation, that is not deductible. That is not deductible. And it'll be funny. Believe it or not, this is the most interesting lecture when I have in-class lecture. We have the most interesting, uh, funny jokes about these deductions. And something related to all of those is political contribution and lobbying activities. How about if you make a political contribution from your business? Can you deduct this? Not deductible. Whether you make that contribution directly or indirectly, that's not deductible. And what's the reason behind this? Well, because if you can make political contribution and deduct political contribution, you know what's going to happen. Businesses, they're going to do what? They're going to try to basically, in a sense, quote, by politicians to do what? Well, to make rules that influence, that that sides with them. That's why it's not deductible. So they don't, want, they don't want to encourage you. You can make as many political contribution as you want. Simply put, you cannot deduct it for, for, uh, for business purposes. How about lobbying activities? Trying to influence, okay? Money spent on lobbying to try to affect local, state, or federal laws or the activities of certain senior public figures, also not deductible. Whether to elect or to influence their decision, that's not deductible. However, for lobbying activities, we have two exceptions that you need to be aware of. Okay, If you are paying money to monitor legislative activities, basically keep track of laws, because that's, that's part of your business. Maybe the, the laws affect your business, and you want to keep track of what's going on. You might have to pay a lobbyist um, to keep track, to talk to legislative, see what's going on. That's different. So as long as you're monitoring legislative activities, just to know what's going on, that's not disallowed. So it is, I should not have put ne double negative, that is deductible, that is allowed. Allowed means deductible because we like deductions. Also, in-house lobbying expense. In-house lobbying expense, it means lobbying paid by your employees. As long as it's under $2,000 annually, they are permitted. However, if you exceed the 2000 none of it is, is deductible. So if you contributed, if your employee contributed 2500 that's it. None of it is deductible. Not the 2000 and the 500 is not. None, none of it is deductible. Let's take a look at this example. Phil S. is an old high school of yours. He's serving latte at a local cafe. One day, Phil comes to you and asks you to help him prepare his federal income tax return. Okay, that's fine. You notice that his bank balance is doing a lot better than his uh, waitering tips should allow. Yeah, you cannot wonder about how. Well, you ask him a few questions and you find out he's not only serving expressos, he's also moonlighting as a bookie, a legal business. So you talk to him, you sit down and say, okay, show me your income. So wages and tip income from the cafe is 15,000. Gambling income from his bookie business, 65,000. He paid out to winners from his bookie business, 22000 And in case you're wondering what is a bookie business, it's basically you take bets um, against, for, for example, sports game, and you'll take a cut. And if the if you chose the right side, you'll have to pay. There's a payout to winners, so you have to pay them out. So this is basically part of operating your business. You also have an employee that follow up with the, your gamblers, call them, let them know what's going on, whenever they need to pay, if there's a payout, so on and so forth. You pay them 5000 Phil paid them 5000 and the local police are, is aware of, uh, one of the local police officers is aware of you, and what you did is you bribed them, you paid them $10,000 to keep their mouth shut. Now we need to complete the federal income tax return for this individual. The first thing I would say, stay away from Phil, Phil S. But if you are going to compute their income taxes, we're going to include the tip income, 15000 we are going to include the gambling income, 65000 So total income of 80000 Then on Schedule C, 
Phil Kendall dug the 22,000. So basically the 65 and the 22, those goes on Schedule C because that's his business. Although it's illegal, it's still a business. Then we can deduct the $5,000 of employee expenses. So 80 minus 20. Let, let, let's do them separately. Let's do the business separately. So I want to make sure I make the point. So first, Phil has a W-2 wages. W-2 wages is right here, 15,000. Then we'll have to prepare a Schedule C. Schedule C, we're going to have 65,000 of income minus 22,000, basically pay out to winners, minus 5,000 the employee. Phil is allowed to deduct those. So 65 minus 22 minus 5, that's 38,000. We cannot deduct bribe to the police officer, to the local police officer. Why? Because this is illegal. The 10,000 is illegal. Now, this is the business income. Now, bear in mind, bear in mind, you don't want to associate yourself with a client like this. That's not your problem in a sense that uh, you're only preparing their taxes. However, however, if you know he's bribing a police officer, then, you know, there is no confidentiality as a CPA or as an accountant or as a bookkeeper. So you have to be aware. You have to be careful of what you do. But this is basically the amount that's included in fill taxable income, the 38 plus the 15. I would, you know, your integrity is the most important thing as a CPA or a uh, or and as an accountant. So make sure you keep that. Uh, what should you do now to learn more about this disallowed deductions? Go to Farhat Lectures. Look at additional lectures, MCQs, true false. That's going to help you understand this concept better. Whether you are a CPA candidate, accounting student, or enrolled agent, good luck. Study hard and stay safe.